Well, good morning. Um, thanks for having us out. We're really, uh, really excited and honored to be here at um, uh, Creative Mornings. Um, I guess we'll start out a little bit of our background. So um, we uh, we started Maker House about 11 months ago, and um, it's been a it's been a wild ride for sure. Um, we're basically located in Fremont, and as David um, alluded to, we're like this fabrication lab and space. We're like 10,000 square feet. Um, of uh, creative maker space. We're like a gym with tools. So for those of you that uh, have never been or don't really know much about us, um, we've got a wood shop, metal shop, laser cutter, 3D printers. People come there to um, you know, work on their own ideas uh, and turn those into Kickstarter projects or crowdfunded projects. People come there to support their businesses. So people are um, looking for space and looking for equipment uh, to support the development and proof of concept of their own ideas. Um, and people are there just to hang out, just for community's sake, kind of like a clubhouse, um, to meet other people and uh, you know, mix it up with like-minded people. Um, so how did we get here? Um, this is pretty awesome. Um, we didn't really know where this would go or how, uh, how well it would be received um, you know, by Seattle. We had a good idea. We'd done a lot of st case studies. We'd done a lot of um, you know, insights, our own backgrounds, creative background. My background is in industrial design. Um, Ellie's background is in uh, design strategy. And we've worked for all kinds of different companies, large and small, consultancies, uh, major corporations. Um, you know, we've had a lot of uh, life experiences doing other little entrepreneurial things, um, you know, two-time Kickstarter offenders, um, come up with our own ideas, uh, attempted to get other things going at other points in time. Um, but, you know, really, you know, we're, we're very adventurous, you know, always wanting to see the world, get out, um, you know, learn, uh, learn about other cultures. We've lived in other places. Um, you know, Ellie's from New Orleans. Um, I spent three years in Bozeman, Montana, working for the world's smallest design firm, actually the um, only design firm in all of Montana, if you can imagine. Um, <laughs> Got, uh, got, my, uh, got my 35 days a year in on the ski hill. I um, was pretty proud of that. Um, and, uh, you know, but we, we love to travel. So, you know, getting out, getting out in the United States, getting out in Europe. Um, you know, we spent, uh, we were very fortunate to spend um, nine days in Copenhagen during the design festival and got a lot of inspiration. And I think one of the main takeaways from, you know, all this travel is just like, is about time to reflect. So, you know, you're on the treadmill, that mind numbing grind that you go through. Uh, day to day at work, and um, you know, being able to actually break away and, and get inspired and see things, um, and have time to talk about you know talk about life, um, you know, definitely, you know, it, it gets a little scary when you start coming up with ideas and reasons to quit your job and start you know businesses, of course, but um, but uh, definitely definitely worth the uh, worth the time. And we got hitched. So um, for those of you that don't know, we're a husband and wife team, uh, Mon Pa Shop, total total operation in that regard. Um, so uh, it's definitely, you know, it's great because you can go home at night and you can talk about, you know, have you put new belts on the belt sander and, you know, are you ready for the event, you know, and, you know, did you close and lock the side door? But then, you know, there's, it's a double-edged sword because you do need time to break away and actually have date night and get out and actually reflect and, and talk about other things. Um, you know, other experiences we've had, like I said, we've done a couple of Kickstarter projects and we're fortunate enough to have the second one funded. Um, so, you know, from a kind of entrepreneurial pursuit, uh, we had, uh, you know, we had a lot of experiences in that regard. Um, went through the company grind, um, like I said, large companies, small companies. Um, I think it's good because, like, as you, as creatives, I'm, I'm assuming there's a, a mass professional creative audience here. Um, as creatives, you know, we we learn our craft and we learn our profession and we get really good at that part. Um, and as we grow and we work longer in our in our professions, we learn about other aspects of the business. Um, you know, for me personally, I'd, I'd learned a lot about, you know, you know, my pursuit. Uh, my craft as an industrial designer, then started to learn more about mechanical engineering, manufacturing, uh, fulfillment, shipping, marketing. Um, and these all came from companies that were specialized in those areas for sure. Um, but you get to a point where you're like, okay, I kind of get all that now. Um, and now I want to try something on my own. Um, you know, you kind of get that itch. And, uh, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, Kickstarter projects and things that we've done kind of was like our way out. You know, we, we realized that you know, at, you get to a point in time where you're like, okay, I really want to try my own thing. I've got enough experience. Um, we also, you know, went back to school. We, uh, we knew all of this. We had this breadth of experience, and uh, we both went back to uh, business school at different points in time. And um, that kind of was the last puzzle piece, I think, in our, 
in our journey that, uh, that got us prepared to actually move forward and, um, and launch into, into a project like Kickstarter, I mean, like uh, Maker House. Um, I wish I started Kickstarter. <laughs> 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 um, so, you know, we kind of uh, use the analogy like a butterfly, you know, kind of transformation. So, like, we personally have kind of transformed from, um, you know, executing day to day to running this business. Um, but we've also lived vicariously through the lives of others who have also transformed doing projects in, uh, inside of Maker House. Um, you know, and this really, what we see this is sort of a, we hope that it becomes kind of Seattle's iconic third place, um, creative place where people come um, to explore, you know, grow as individuals, grow uh, their own personal businesses. Um, I found this like little Polaroid-ish slide. This was like after we got the, the space and the investment was taken care of and all the ink was dried and we got together with our, our small group of people and we're like, okay, let's, let's plan this out, let's bang this out. We had two and a half months to actually go from zero to 100 and actually open our doors. And you know, the amazing thing was people really, like, they got the idea and they were excited about it. And uh, the number of volunteers that just kind of like swooped in and actually started helping us was, was amazing. And we could not have done this. This is not a, a Mike and Ellie, like, boom, we put it together. You know, it was 16 hour days for two months that was like, you know, outrageous. But um, we had our, our short, small staff, we had, uh, working members, there's a ton of people in the back end uh, that helped us with this and, and came in. Um, and then, like I said, zero to 100, boom. All of a sudden, we opened our doors, and it was just like, you know, it's on. We're we're making parts. You know, we're we're running rapid prototyping. We're servicing members. We're hosting events. We're doing youth programs. We're um, you know we're going to town. So now I'm just going to go on a tear here. Um, so you know, we've got our. Uh, 3D print cafe, so members walk up and actually use this, and actually they print for free. So everyone's familiar with MakerBots. That's what we got. We got MakerBots. Um, people are making all kinds of things. You know, like they're doing, you know, um, iPad digital clay models. They're doing architectural models. They're doing engineering models. Um, laser cutters. Suck it is the second most popular machine in the entire house to the to the 3D printers. Um, people do amazing work. This is like a cabinet for somebody who's installing like a dream house over on Bainbridge Island. Um, we do youth programs, making little uh, Arduino class, like little Tinkerbot things. Um, people are using leathers, woods, metals, business cards. They're just going to town. Um, this is one of our favorite people in the world, Brian Marimal. He's an amazing designer. If you need him, find him, use him. Um, he's getting his feet wet. He's like fully, full on, you know, he comes from the digital world. He comes from the, um, the, the visual design world. And, and he's getting his feet wet in, the, in the, one of our intro to um, woodshop classes. Um, Drones, drones are coming out big, right? Amazon, Jeff Bezos is doing drones. Um, this guy, you know, I've got mixed, mixed emotions about drones, but um, you know, there's drones in the house. Um, <laughs> this guy, Scott, Scott is, uh, he's, he's a guitar maker. The guy's like super talented. He was spending like 60 hours a day, um, 60 hours, <laughs> I spend 60 hours a day working. Um, <laughs> took him, used to take him 60 hours to build a guitar. He started working at Maker House, and now he's knocked that down to like, like 30 hours per guitar. And we hope to actually have him and his buddy Danny actually play out well, at one of our events. So it would be a totally cool story to actually have him uh, using the tools that, uh, our tools in order to make his tools and actually you know, um, play out. Um, people are using our materials library, exploring different opportunities to make things. Um, We've got workshops on leather making. This is John. He's like a master, uh, master bag builder. Um, youth programs. We love kids. Kids come in. Um, we teach them about the laser on a high level, how the lasers work, how the 3D printers work. Um, you know, kids suck this up. They absolutely love it. It's a great way to spend like an afternoon, like father and son bonding. Um, uh, and in interestingly enough, there's actually been a lot of activity uh, around you know, design process, design way of thinking uh, for. Uh, for schools. So as we all know, over time, vocational uh, programs have actually been ripped out of a lot of uh, primary education. And there are a lot of programs now that are coming back and um, uh, being offered to high school kids, to uh, elementary school kids, um, at whatever appropriate level uh, there is. And they're actually teaching them a process. Here's a problem, move through, solve for that problem. Um, tell us about how you've identified uh, the solutions for that problem, and then come up with some prototyping. So. Um, this is there actually quite a bit of this we see um, happening at the house. Um, we've got welding for women. And this is a huge class. I mean, this, this get, because it gets sold out all the time. Um, full access members are doing projects in the welding booth. We've got wood shop, metal shop. Um, education is like, we've got three pillars. So basically, we are resources, uh, resources, education, and community. So um, everything that we have, we have some sort of educational program around. 
uh, in addition to that, uh, we're also teaching entrepreneurship class. We had a, a class available on how to get funded on Kickstarter um, software. So people come in at all different levels. You're a professional and you want to uh, up your game, uh, improve your own uh, career or your own skill set, or or you just you're a, you're a greenhorn to making, and you're like, what is this 3D printing you speak of? You know, like I'd love to get more um, get more experience in that. Um, we can actually we teach software uh, so that you can actually then in turn go and actually use the uh, use the machines. Um, electronics programming, Arduino classes, um, hackathons. We've actually hosted two hackathons so far. Um, had a lot of fun at that. And one of our po really actually most popular classes is the speak speaker building class. And this is where it's like really interesting having um, having like where digital and um, and physical kind of come together. So there's the craft of actually the cabinet building side, but then there's also this whole uh, principles of acoustics side that, that's been taught. Um, and a lot of our classes too are evolve around the laser or 3D printer. So if you're gonna take a CAD class with us, it's not a CAD class, it's not just CAD for CAD's sake, it's CAD for 3D printing. So there's a, like an artifact that people walk away with. Um, all right, make good society. Oh, you need this? Go ahead. So Make Good Society is something we put together because beyond just providing people with resources and access to get their ideas out there, um, we wanted to provide them with the means to build community and also be inspired. So pretty much every week we host this event where it's, it could be a speaker coming in, it could be something else, but like this is, for example, Autumn Martin. You guys have probably been to a place in Ballard. It's hot cakes. You know, it's the legendary chocolate um, cakery. And, she came in and really blew us all away by her immense knowledge of chocolate. So um, whether, it's, whether it's, you know, chocolate or coffee or, you know, maybe it's somebody doing, you know, amazing woodworking or, you know, programming, um, interaction design, it's people bringing us into their process, which is really ex exciting and inspiring for people. Um, we also do a sip and sketch. So an opportunity for people to come out and flex those creative muscles in a not so serious way. They might be doing conceptual stuff. They might be drawing each other. Um, so really a way to just, you know, get creative and not be, you know, working on client work um, necessarily. For Halloween this year, we did pumpkin carving. Some of the most creative pumpkins I've ever seen. Um, so it was a really fun experience, I think, for everybody. And we've hosted concerts. So we did a concert series last summer, which was a great way to have people experience local musicians in an, in an inspiring environment. Um, another thing that we're really advocates for is, um, sorry, my mouth is dry, um, building awareness around people's ideas. So, you know, it's one thing to get your idea built, but how do you how do you get into retail or how do you build awareness about it? So we hosted our first ever pop-up shop, which was a raging success. We had um, magazines come out for it, buyers, um, s some people had their best day of sales ever um, there, and they were just, it was a curated selection of Seattle's creative community selling their wares. So, you know, we talked about like a lot of what individuals do, but what we're really excited about is like that third pillar of our business, which is community. Um, and what we see is a lot of people come in, again, just for the, uh, the exposure to other creatives. So, um, shared experiences, you know, a husband or wife come in and actually, push themselves to actually, and this is part of the speaker building class that, uh, that, that was conducted. Um, a lot of the relationships that are being built, people are actually mentoring and teaching one another. Um, you know, it's Glenn on the left, Jeff on the right. You know, Glenn's like a, a master machinist and, and Jeff is a wood, uh, woodsmith. And so, you know, they're both trying to, um, Glenn's actually teaching Jeff um, a little bit about the mill. Um, and team building, this is something that um, it's kind of fortuitous, we thought would probably happen, but um, you know, there are a lot of uh, companies that come and do offsites, and so in the, you know, come in the spirit of um, you know building rapport with your with your coworkers, they'll actually have us create some content for them, and then they'll go through a process. Um, and it's really, I mean, in Seattle, everything is very high tech. Everything is very uh, digital, and to actually have people go through um, and actually practice something in the physical world, it's it's a I don't know, there's a visceral kind of quality to moving through a project and then experiencing that with somebody else. Um, and then going back and having that, uh, um, that, that knowledge base to actually refer back to. And I think it, it does a lot to actually uh, build team, uh, team morale. Um, community, we host uh, creative events. We have this whole gallery section, um, the, uh, the, um, the open, the maker open, <laughs> I'm dying here. Um, the uh, the pop-up shop, that whole area is actually a gallery as well. And so part of what we want to do to give back to the community is be able to actually post uh, our members' work and Seattle Creative Community's work 
And so we, since we drive a lot of traffic to our space, um, we help uh, small independent designers actually build brand awareness and, uh, um, and help them out in, in that regard. Um, so we thought it'd be fun to actually show you our report card. So we've been open for 11 months. Um, in those 11 months, we've acquired at all levels about 322 members, uh, 1,600 subscribers. Um, we've taught 520 some odd students through 104 instructors in 141 classes, hosted about 37 events, 3D printed about 421 parts. Um, we won in a GeekWire Award um, about a week ago, uh, hosted two hackathons, uh, and you've liked us almost 2,800 times. So um, not bad. We're pretty, we're pretty pleased with that. Um, that says that the, it's working. I feel there's a demand for, for what it is we're trying to provide to Seattle. Um, so back to transformation. So you know, we've transformed you know, ourselves personally, like we said, but we've also been fortunate enough to live vicariously through uh, the lives of others and actually seeing their projects and, and how they personally transform themselves. And we came up with three key principles on transformation. Um, the first one is defy the norm. Um, let me take you way over on the other side of the continent. This is Nairobi in Kenya, about three, three million people. Um, there's a company that actually works partially out of Maker House uh, called Sanergy. Um, Mike Hahn is the, uh, is the member of Maker House, actually works for that company. And he and Sanergy are working on a device that actually helps to create a, um, a system that actually moves human waste from basically an unsanitary uh, scenario where it's actually polluting uh, rivers and polluting uh, the environment um, through to uh, a source where it actually, um, it's actually used for economic gain. So it, um, they're actually turning human waste into energy and they're turning it into fertilizer. Um, and I thought it was just, a, it's an amazing story. I wish I had more time to go into it. Uh, but, uh, but it's definitely something that's, um, that's basically an awesome solution to a problem that's you know, actually being done here in Seattle in Maker House um, and executed you know, all the way across the continent. So one of the other things that we've really seen um, be part of this transformation is this idea about getting uncomfortable, pushing yourself out of your, your area, you know, exploring new boundaries. Give a talk at Creative Mornings in front that's of right. 200 people. <laughs> in front of 200 people. Um, there's a great quote that's, you know, by a famous college coach, um, Ohio State University. There's nothing like, there's nothing that cleanses the soul like getting the hell kicked out of you, and we see that all the time. So it's, it's been um, one of those things that's reoccurring. Last in, um, last June in Maker House, we hosted the first ever Maker Edition of Startup Weekend. And for those of you who don't know, what Startup Weekend is, it's essentially 54 hours. People, 100 people, come together. You know, it starts out where some of them have ideas and they pitch them, and then, you know, some of those ideas go through, and then they assemble teams, and you know, by the end of the weekend, they actually have a fully functioning prototype, as well as a business plan and a strategy to get after it. And so we hosted this, not knowing what to expect, and this little girl, 12 years old, gets up and pitches a room full of adults. I mean, she was noticeably uncomfortable, but she did it, and she shared our vision of creating this. Um, climate controlled, basically cloud-based um, you know, plant box that you could control the climate by an application that lived on either your desktop or your mobile phone. And her idea actually went through. So <laughs> she, she assembled a team of adults, led them through an entire process, and, and then pitched the final presentation to some very elite judges coming from Coca-Cola, Madrona Ventures and um, and wow, it was it was an inspiring transformation. She was she was the, the inspiration, yeah, yeah, for the entire weekend. Um, and third, um, find a way to fail. Um, this is kind of a you know, something we've all heard before, right? Fail, fail often, fail fast. Find find lots of ways to fail. Um, for those of you that might not know, Thomas Edison, you know, had a great quote: "I've not failed. I've just found a thousand ways that won't work." Um, you know, and it's really true. I mean, one way of talking about that is really simply trial and error. Without trial and error, there's really no growth. And you have to um, you know, understand that and make room for it in order to grow professionally and personally. Um, a lot of companies actually uh, provide opportunities for trial and error and growth. And we think it's really, really important uh, for any company, whether it's doing an offsite or actually coming in and doing a hackathon like um, Digital Kitchen here did a couple months back, providing their, um, their employees that have all kinds of ability on talent uh, to actually explore and, and exploit or exploit, uh, grow that, that talent 
so that they then have those experiences that they can move forward with and, and provide uh, to clients and say, hey, look, you know, we've got these experiences. Here's a bunch of uh, work that we've done. Um, rather than wait for the product opportunity, project opportunities to, to fall in your lap and then get the experience, they proactively move forward uh, with a group um, from multiple cities that all came to, to Maker House um, and, uh, and worked on, on different projects. So um, collectively now they're much stronger. Um, their, um, their, uh, their employee base now has all these skills in it uh, and proof of, uh, proof of the work that they can do and they can actually be proud of that and go and solicit that, which they, they do. So here's a little, um, Example of what that was like. Get this working here. Yeah, go ahead, just take it apart and just see what happens. Oh my god. Are you freaking out a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> These are all amazing. Yeah. That was so much fun. So that took place over about two days. Um, we had to get them all signed up in the wood shop and the metal shop, make sure they took their safety training courses. It was interesting seeing those guys kind of tear into some uh, heavy equipment that they're not typically using. Um, so, you know, to kind of wrap it all up, you know, what we've really found is that our experiences over the last 11 months have really been, you know, transformational, both personally and uh, for a lot of other people, other companies. Um, and you know the three ways in which we really feel people need to get out of their out of their caves or out of their own little environments and actually transform themselves is through defining the norms, getting uncomfortable, and finding a way to fail. Um, and we hope you all come out and check out Maker House. We're open seven days a week, and uh, we'd love to see you come out if you haven't. Thank you, guys. Thanks. So um, we thought we'd take just about, about five minutes um, and let you guys get to know sort of the people you're sitting next to um, or in front of or behind of. Um, Mike had a good suggestion to sort of kick off the, the conversation, which was, I, I believe, this idea of sort of in what ways do you fail? Am I, am I wording that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Um, so, uh, yeah. I mean, th say that again. In what ways do you find a way to fail? In what ways do you find a way to fail? So how do you try to fail? <laughs> um, so uh, kind of a vulnerable place to put yourself in with a stranger, <laughs> but um, it could, maybe a good place to start. So yeah, it's all about getting uncomfortable. So let's take about five minutes, um, say hi to the person uh, you're, you're closest to, and uh, then we'll come back and do some Q&A for a little bit and go from there. Thanks. <laughs> Hey guys. <laughs> We're going to circle back now and I think start a little Q&A. So if you guys want to dim the light.
lights and So now that you've learned a little bit about our journey and, and sort of this idea of transformation, does, do you, does anybody have any questions about anything? <laughs> yes, in the back. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the, the question qu was, um, do we have an open house? And we actually are open seven days a week. We give tours twice daily. And it's about a half an hour in length because um, it's a pretty large space. And you know, there's usually a lot of questions about certain areas. But um, every day, 1 o'clock and 7 p.m. So yes. Yeah, so the story is... We got um, skin in the game. The, the question is, um, you know, what is the story behind the story and how, you know, we're really passionate about this, but did we, did we invest in the idea personally? And we definitely did. I think we, you know, were the majority investors, um, but we did bring on outside um, partners that are also mentors, which is great to have. Um, but yeah, we, we definitely are fully in, committed. Yes. How do you find mentors for something like that? It would be a relatively novel idea. Yeah. Um, you know, the question is, how do we find mentors for something like this? Well, really, it was, it was serendipity. I think. I mean, uh, I guess when talking about this idea, it it started to take root with a lot of people, um, and some some people that were very passionate about it and could see the vision for what it would do for the community came to us, and they were also you know, very successful entrepreneurs in their own right had built companies from the ground up. And um, so for us, it, it seemed to just be really around their love for the ideas w and belief in it. Um, but Seattle is a community full of entrepreneurs. So I would encourage any of you to reach out to people and just, you know, talk to them about your ideas because you never know who you're going to meet. So, yes. Where do you transform people? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do we transform from here? Um, as, as individuals or our company or? Uh, I mean, you know, every, you know, every month is a, is a growth opportunity for us as, as, uh, as entrepreneurs. You know, we, um, you know, we were just talking to D uh, David about how, you know, really when you're, when you're running a business, you, you know, you write a plan, but, you know, you know, throw that out in three months, throw it out in six months. You know, you don't know what you don't know, and your customers tell you what, what your business is, you know, in a lot of cases at the end of the day. And, you know, we've made pivots um, and, and changes and refinements and tweaks, and we continue. And the nature of our company is so, so interesting because there's so many, so many branches that can branch off from it, you know. We've got a core that we feel is, is in demand now, um, but there's definitely possibility to go uh, in other directions um, that would re be really interesting and really... Um, true to the core of what we're trying to do. So uh, I think we are right now at a point where we are, there's so much going on. Um, and, and I mean, it's like five businesses in one that all really work together well. Um, we're, uh, you know, we're up to our eyeballs just trying to um, you know, stay with it and, and keep, keep that going. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think um, there's things in planning, you know, without getting too specific, um, that we'd love to do um, that, uh, that make, make natural sense, yeah. You turn it around, right? <laughs> uh, hey, can can she do that, David? <laughs> um, significant failures, Ellie. You know, <laughs> um, you know. Gosh, I mean, you know, there's so. Uh, you know what? Here, this could be a, this could be an example. I think um, we were just talking to David about this. We when we initially opened our business, we had all this equipment, and we thought, okay, you know, the key things that. We, there's key things that we want people to walk up and have hands-on access to. And there's other things that um, we're going to essentially put a, a, like a paywall up in front of. Um, and that is the, all the rapid prototyping, our 3D printers, our um, CNC router, our um, laser cutter. And because those were kind of the, the finicky, uh, more complex machines. And we figured um, it'd be better if you know, we actually hosted those for our members and ran that. And what we found was that 
Um, like people didn't like that, you know? We spent a lot of time like looking over our shoulder, like they give us projects to do. Um, and yeah, they, they, they were paying for it as members and we gave them a, a big discount. But, but at the end of the day, that's not why they were there. That's not why they were, they were signed up to be part of, uh, part of Maker House. They wanted, they wanted to learn about the machine. They wanted hands-on access to, that, to those machines. And um, you know, and it was it is evident because like they would give us pro uh, projects to run, and they would want to schedule the time that we were running it for them, so that they could actually be there and, and watch it. And then it was all about like asking a million questions, you know, while we were actually running the machines. And finally, okay, the light went on, and we're like, you know what? Let's just open it up. Let's let's allow everybody to have hands-on access to this stuff because at the end, end of the day, that's why they're there. They want that visceral, tactile, hands-on experience of running the machines, pulling the parts out of the machine. Um, you know, it's, it's, so we, so we switched our model now. So, um, everybody gets access to, to everything in the house. Yeah. Yeah. So the, so the question is, are we were concerned about the machines breaking down and, and actually opening up the, the doors for people to use them? Um, Yes, yeah, we were definitely concerned about that. Um, education is like not only a big part of our business, like all around, but about you know be, before isn't it like hey, welcome, you know, you signed up with us and go for it, good luck. Tell us if you cut your finger off. You know, that's that's not how it works. Um, but we've got we've got like safety like gates in place that that get people. Um, knowledgeable and, and educated and, and, and safe. And so you go through safety training classes, you go through, um, you need the laser cutter every Saturday morning. Um, I'm teaching the laser cutting class, <laughs> um, educating people on how to, how to run the machines. There's also a 3D print class, there's also a CNC routing class. So we let people, you know, we know people know how to safely and properly use the machines. And then there's always somebody circling around um, to help people, you know, because they're going to inevit inevitably get stuck. Um, we've selected, I think, the right equipment so that that makes it easier for people to get their projects done because at the end of the day you know they're there to they're there to use the tool to get to another place you know with their project they don't want to um, you know they don't want to be maintaining or, or tweaking or wrenching on the on the uh, machines themselves so it's actually worked out pretty well I think we've made some really good choices with the um, with the machines that we have so it's working out yeah Yeah, so the question is, you know, are we are we doing our own? Are we getting a chance to play it all in our own sandbox versus just running the business? Very good question, and we joke about that a lot. Um, you know, you can't not be in a space like that and come up with not come up with your own ideas. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, we're so busy, you know, running the business. It's one of those it's one of those transformative experiences <laughs> that that you go through. Um, and I think that uh, you know, it's you know, it's it's good and bad. As we grow, you know, we'll we'll take on more. Uh, more help, and I think we'll be able to to play a little bit more. Um, but you know, there is a level that we need to actually be engaged with, so that we understand how the how the machines operate and what you know what people are going through, and be able to you know, provide service and help. So, um, I mean, we've done. I mean, some of the actually the cool actually the cool thing about when we started was that as soon as we got all the, it was like we were a kid in a candy store with ADD. Like as soon as we got all of our toys in, you know, then it was like okay, now Maker House can actually start to make itself. So we were making our tables. We're making, you know, we're making the the kiosks, the walk-up areas. Um, I mean, so we've actually, in that way, got to make some furniture and some, you know, some uh, architecture, you know, small scale. Um, but uh, but yeah, that's a constant like internal struggle that we have is, when are we going to get to? When are we going to have time to play? But we definitely have notebooks full of ideas. When we get that time to play, <laughs> we're going to play for sure. Yep. Um, you guys talked about going to going back to business school at some point, you know, in your life. Um, I was wondering if you could talk about well, like when you decide to go back to business school, and maybe like how that connects to Maker House. Did Maker House inspire going back, or did business school inspire Maker House in some way, or you know? Yeah. Do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. So the question is, um, you know, when did we decide to go back to business school? Um, you know, how do you decide that, really? Um, so for me, I went much earlier than Mike. He actually um, went a little bit later. But I think, I think 
I mean, both, both of us went before Maker House. And I mean, I think we've always been very entrepreneurial. And so, um, you know, it was important for us to have a sense for how to build a solid model, how to understand, you know, creating a go-to-market strategy and, and all of those things. Um, so I, I would highly recommend it for anybody who's entrepreneurial and wanting to, you know, has the aspirations to pursue their own ideas. Um, I don't know anymore if you need to go to a full-fledged program is the thing. So there's a lot of options out there. Um, yeah, I, I went to a certificate program through the University of Washington. It was a, a business, I think the title of the class was like business development. It was um, like evening -ish. nine months in the evenings, you know, 6 to 9 p.m. kind of thing. Um, and I think, I honestly, what motivated me at that point in time was that I was, I was really excited about crowdfunding. And I figured, okay, if, you know, God forbid one of these ideas just takes off. I, you know, I might want to know, you know, a little bit more about because you know creatives are all wily, and we just, you know, we focus on the craft. And you know, if I'm going to actually grow this into something, I might want to, might want to know a thing or two about the the business side of it. So you know, I, you know, we we picked up a lot of experience on the way through mm -hmm. all the companies we'd worked for, but you know, actually running your own business. I mean, that's kind of a cliche. Creatives can't run a business. You know, why do they know? You know, so we figured, you know, the more you know, knowledge is power. So you know, the more we knew. Um, you know, the better we'd be in a position to, um, to run something. So that was more, I think, based on just, you know, doing crowdfunding projects and, and, and things on the side. And then over time, um, a couple ideas had evolved into what is now Maker House. And so we were in a good position at that point to, to use that education. I also think that, um, just one second, I also think that, um, that you know, part of the reason that a lot of our curriculum is entrepreneurial is because one thing that we found through education is that some of the best instructors are the ones that come from you know application. You know, they're they're not academics, totally academics. They've taught in universities before, maybe, but um, they work in this professionally, and and you know they've arrived at a point in their career where they want to share that knowledge and help other people get to the place they want to go, and so. Um, you know, we created a curriculum around just that, like how do you navigate the patent process and the IP and trademark stuff. I mean, stuff that people want to know when they're trying to, to get their business off the ground. We actually have entrepreneurs that are serial entrepreneurs come in and teach classes on how do you build a business from the ground up? What, you know, what options are there out there for funding? You know, all these different things. And I feel that, um, that anymore, I mean, you can invest in a full-fledged program, and it's and it's it's really worthwhile if you have the time to do that. But you can also get a taste of something, without without doing that. So, along with your business acumen that you went to school mm -hmm. for, did you also bring in um, at times, or are you bringing in business experts in certain areas and, and what areas? Yeah. So we definitely are. So the question is. Um, are we bringing in experts in certain areas to, um, to cover various topics around business? Um, and we are. So we've got, like I said, the trademark patent classes that we offer that are taught by a, a lawyer in that field. And, um, and so it's a chance to you know, get legal advice on this kind of thing without actually paying the hourly. So. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. So there's, there's you know, there's the, the people that we meet and network mm -hmm. with from our educational programs that we can, you know, we can refer to and talk to. Um, there's yeah. also our, our investment group as well. That's right. um, one thing to note that, you know, it was really excited for us, exciting for us when we actually put this uh, business together is that a lot of the, uh, the people that are on our team, they're amazing people. They've actually, they've all been in our situation at one point in time. So they, they've actually grown a, a startup from, you know, from where we are today. Um, up to where they are, to the point where they could actually return, you know, pay it, pay it forward essentially, and, and help us out. So uh, we do, we do lean on them quite a bit. Any other questions? Well, thank you guys for coming out. It's been really fun. It's early in the morning. <laughs>